Hello audience, we got the new wood and now we're going to begin installing it. Now here we have the new roof wood that just showed up. We got an entire set from Snyder's Antique Auto Parts. Now as you may have noticed in the previous videos, I don't really favor these pre-made wood kits. I've had bad experiences with them. The last time I used one was when I was putting together a 1915 Model T touring car body. And the pieces that were reasonably straight, most of them worked, but anything that had a curve in it, some of it could be modified to work, but most of it I just had to throw away and start over. So from that point on, I try to make the wood myself as often as I can. So why did we buy a ready-made kit this time? Well, mostly because of cost. This was only like, I think 600 bucks, not including shipping, and I'd struggle just to get the raw materials for that. Also, the wood on the two-door sedan is not very elaborate. Most of the pieces are reasonably straight, so to me there's a better chance of it actually fitting, but we'll just have to wait and see. And here it all is. Now yeah, we'll look closer at this stuff when we begin installing it. Also ordered a new hardware kit. So the plan now is I'm gonna trial fit all this stuff, make sure it fits, do any modifications if needed, and when it all works I'll take it back apart paint all this really good, and then throw it in permanently. Now, in spite of the condition of the wood on the roof, everything else on here is still pretty good. So we're just going to reuse it. Now this panel was welded on originally, but this one on the left side is cracked loose. Now we're going to have to weld it back on at some point, but while it's off it's a whole lot easier to work on the wood. So, we're going to leave it off for now. Alright, this piece goes across the back. The holes surprisingly lined up. I just had to run a drill through it to align them properly. These corners on both sides were a little too wide. I had to trim a little bit out of them. But surprisingly, the rest of it fit pretty good. The piece that goes behind it, also surprisingly the holes lined up, so that was good to go. Now these corner pieces, they did need a little work. On the left side, I had to trim a little off here. This groove for the tack strip wasn't deep enough, I had to trim more out of that. I think I had to trim a little bit off this end too, and I had to cut it down a little bit around the outside so that it fit against the body fairly evenly, and that was about it. One for the right side, I had to cut a little bit off this end, nothing on here. Now the groove for the tack strip was the same depth but this one sets inside further, so it wasn't a problem. Also, I had to trim a little bit off on the outside, kind of in the same location. On both of them, the mounting hole lined up perfectly, which was surprising. I did have to countersink it a little bit, but the hole was in the right place. Now the big piece that goes on the sides I installed the right one and I had a noticeable amount of difficulty with this. Now first of all, the mounting holes are more or less where they should be, but not quite. So the problem is, when you put all these bolts in, the inside sticks out about an eighth of an inch, whereas it should be flush with the steel, like the original was. And after a little examining, we figured out why it was that way. 
This is about one and three quarters, one and five eighths. So this part from about here forward is consistently about an eighth inch wider. Another thing is the mounting holes in relation to this groove and this are slightly further forward so this is a little further back than it should be. So on the other side I had to fill in all these holes and redrill them. Another thing I did was to fix this problem I trimmed this much off of it. Now since the holes already lined up theoretically the thing to do would be to trim the outside. I chose to trim this side because if I did this side I probably couldn't do as smooth of a job and I'd have to trim this down also. So this I decided was simpler and I'm probably gonna have to do all that to this as well. So now we have it in place and I've lined up the bolt holes which most of them line up and it fits great except as you can see it sticks out here. It's not flush with the steel. Same problem as the other side. And I trimmed quite a bit off here. And also, I drove a dowel in all these holes and glued them. And I have it marked where the hole should be. And as you can see, they're noticeably pretty far off. So now I'll just drill those and put it back in. Alright, I re-drilled the holes and now it's fitting pretty good. I think we can leave it. Also, I threw the header on just for fun and surprisingly it looks pretty good. You may not have to do anything to it. Now, we already painted the inside of the body here, at least where the wood goes across it. Now originally, as you can see back here, between the steel and the wood they used an insulation made out of natural cotton batting. Yeah, that's not fiberglass or anything, that is cotton. Which is an excellent choice if you're trying to trap water back here. But we can use something a little different. So this is what I'm using, leftover upholstery vinyl. This is pretty much the same stuff I used on the four-door, and that worked just fine. And it's not going to absorb water as much as the cotton did. Now where the wood contacts the steel frame, originally they had a thin layer of tar paper between them. Now I'm using duct tape, which pretty much does the same thing, but it's adhesive backed. Now, we don't really have to overthink this too much. What this has to do more than anything else is keep it from squeaking, and it doesn't take much to do that. What we really don't want to do is put it together with nothing at all, because it may be tight at first, but after a few miles or so, they might start loosening up and squeaking, and it can get really annoying. And once it's assembled, there's nothing we can do about it. But this will work. Now, the hardware kit came with no instructions or diagram or anything, so basically I'm just taking the old hardware and matching it up to its closest match to something in the new hardware bag. Now, so far there were six of these carriage bolts that were just long enough to hold these together, which is perfect. Now, these right here in the corner, at first, there's a bunch of these length bolts. At first I put one of these in. The problem is there's a piece of wood that goes in back here and that was going to get in the way of it. So there were two of these bolts which I thought, oh, they must be for this corner. However, they're not long enough. They're just a little bit too short. So I got the original bolt that came out of this. And as you can see, it's just long enough to fit a nut on the other side of here. 
Now I could go to the hardware store and try to find a carriage bolt that length, but I'm not going to drive all the way out there just to get two bolts. So I took two of the longer bolts and just trimmed them down until they're the same length. That means theoretically we're going to be two carriage bolts short someplace else, but I can get them and probably going to need to get a few other things by then anyway. Now the next problem with the hardware is this is the piece of wood that goes on the side. This is the old one. But the carriage bolts that we took out, it's got a short one that goes here. It's got two of them that are slightly longer that go here and here. And then it's got three longer ones that go from here back. Now the reason these bolts are slightly longer is because on the body there's like a half inch thick piece of wood on here. The kit, all they give you is this, which is long enough for the fronts, but they're a quarter inch shorter than the ones used in the rear. So when I put these in, they come out about there, which they don't stick out far enough to get the nut on it. So I've thought about this for a little while, and I've decided I'm pretty much going to give up on the bolt kit and just reuse the old bolts because there's nothing really wrong with them and they were working. Guess what? We're having another problem with the bolt kit. Now this is brace, which is pretty much a cross member that goes across the roof. It's got two screws on each side that hold it in. Now there's only four of these left in the bolt kit, so obviously they go to this. Now when I was putting them in, they were bottoming out against the sheet metal. And when I put this one in, I noticed it stuck out quite a bit from here. So, these are actually about a quarter of an inch longer than the originals. Well, they were. What I did was I trimmed them down so they're the right length. Now, this panel was originally welded on with a piece of sheet metal under here that was spot welded to both sides. Now I had to weld it from the outside obviously because we already assembled the wood frame and the reason I assembled the framing first is so that I would have a way to hold this rigid where it should be while welding it together. It will work this way. The only part of the seam that's really visible is right here and obviously I left it alone for that reason. Now surprisingly, the header fit perfectly. We didn't have to do anything to it. Even the bolt holes lined up. Well, that's it for this video. Now we didn't finish the wood just yet. I still need to install the ribs that go across here. But the body's assembled enough to start painting it. Which is just in time because we got the color match back. And we'll talk more about that in a future video. So anyway, thank you very much for watching. We'll see you next time.